So you were taking home the arcade, you were getting the full arcade you experience. You had ultimate bragging rights. This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com, purveyors of quality joysticks for all of your retro kit. Joysticks, adapters, arcade control parts, and more. Check them out at MonsterJoysticks.com, and we thank them for supporting the cave. Hello cave dwellers, welcome into the cave. We are in the presence of a legend today. And I'm not talking about Keith here, sat next to me. Sorry, Keith, from the Digital Orphanage YouTube channel and the Museum of Computing in Swindon. Well worth a visit, all the links in the video description below. Note the legend I'm referring to is the legend of the Neo Geo, a system that was well out of at least my affordability, mm -hmm. probably yours as well. Mm -hmm. uh, only in the arcades did I get to play on the Neo Geo. And I've got fond memories of that classic um, Neo Geo screen, the white screen with the logo appearing in the arcades and the jingle. In fact, to get us in the mood, let's play it now. So many great memories just hearing that. And often I would hear that jingle long before I saw it. It would echo around the arcade halls on multiple machines. And I did my arcade gaming back in those days um, on Weymouth Seafront down on the south coast of the UK. How about yourself? Uh, for me, it was uh, at Western Super Mare on the pier, but I don't remember a Neo Geo there. I don't think I saw one until um, it would have been early 90s down in uh, Hale in Hale. Cornwall. Okay, okay. Mm. Um, the one I remember um, the most was the King of Fighters game. I can't remember which version it was because it's, it's a series with loads of games in it. Uh, King of Fighters was positioned directly opposite Street Fighter 2. Mm. And I remember... It wasn't a bad game, but the queues were always for Street Fighter 2. There were very few people actually playing on King of Fighters. But um, yeah, fond memories of the Neo Geo. The rain is just coming in above us here. I hope you, hopefully you can't hear it on the roof. Um, and uh, what we've got in front of us is a spread of Neo Geo things going back to 1990. And it's been prompted really by Keith's latest purchase, which is at that end. So mm. just tell us what you bought recently to, to satisfy the dream, wasn't it? It was. So I'd had, you know, a well-known auction site reminder to pop up and it finally found me something a bit affordable in uh, Neo Geo AES, the Advanced Entertainment System. And it's really going for it now, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> when, when you say a bit affordable, can I, do you mind me asking how much you paid for that? I think it was in the 300 realm. Okay. That was no boxes, no polys, instructions. It joystick? Was just, uh, one, joystick one joystick and the RGB lead, uh, and that was it. Okay. Not so even you, a game. You finally got yourself the Neo Geo you always lusted after, and mm. we'll talk about that in a minute, and we have been playing it this morning, so we can give you our thoughts on it. Uh, before that came, only just before that, in 1990, it was the same year that they came out, wasn't it? Or was that 91? Well, I think... As a rental system, this came out at the same time as the MVS. Right, okay. So they produced both at the same time. It was only a few months later when they sold this as a home system. Okay, so it started out life as a rental-only mm. system. We'll come on to that in a minute, because what did come first or at the same time as mm. the rental system was this, or a form of this. This is the MVS, or multi-video system. This is the board that would have been in the arcades. This particular one could hold two games. Um, We'll talk about this first, actually, because, you know, this is the one that I remember. So this is the two slot one. It came in versions with one slot, two, four, six, two, four and six maximum. Yeah. So um, you may remember arcades where you could select the game and in the marquee at the top, it would have a little sort of box art, wouldn't mm. it, of each of the games and you could choose which game to play. Now, I'm going to start off with this for a bit of a negative and I'm not going to be down on the Neo Geo. I do respect the system and I love it and we'll talk about lots of positive things. But my first reaction when the Neo Geo um, appeared and I realized that it was available as a home console as well as um, an arcade was perhaps a bit of snobbery. Because I always remember really loving the arcade machines that I thought, this is a specialist unit that's made specifically for this one game. Take, um, take hard driving, for instance. You know, everything was made to run that one game. And when I realized it was a system that was running on cartridges that could run multiple games and you could if you were rich enough, have it at home. It took a little bit of the magic off of it for me. And I, I recognize now, looking back, that's absolute arcade snobbery. And there were plenty of other people doing it, Capcom with their CPS mm -hmm. system, making a, a platform that could be used for lots of games. It's just that they kind of, um, 
I don't know, kept the wizard's curtain over it a little bit more and I felt those games um, were a bit more special. Do you, uh, do you think I'm talking absolute nonsense or, or is there any truth in that? I, I get it. I get what you're, where you're coming from there. Um, there was a little bit of, as, if you could own one of these and you know they share a memory card slot so you could play at home, go in there and, and basically show off by completing a game. Yeah, you've got your memory card here so you could put that in the slot at home or in the arcade and just mm. carry on your game. Yeah. So, so as, as a system to kind of go into the arcade and, and show off without having to spend huge amounts of money, but, <laughs> although you've already spent it here, uh, I guess there's that. But I think where these systems come up, do a really good job is in your chip shops and your places like that, where they don't have huge amounts of space, where they could have six games in a nice little space. Um, and, and I sort imagine of... it would be a relatively low cost unit compared mm. to other arcades. And they can refresh the games, keep it, you know, as the latest stuff come out. So it, it definitely have a, have, you know, has a arcade spot. But and I... it's, it's better again than, for example, Nintendo had um, an NES based multi-game arcade well, and Sega had the Megatech for, based mm -hmm. on the Mega Drive Genesis. Certainly a step up from that. Mm. And, yeah. and it's something that although you could own at home, I mean, we're talking a console that uh, pretty much adjusted for inflation was the most expensive console, full stop. Yeah, so. yeah. With a caveat, some people say, um, for the CDI. But you're on the fence with that, aren't you? I, I, I don't think the CDI was a games console. <laughs> Philips never sold it as a games console. I, I used to sell it in Dixon's and it was never sold as a games console. There are games for it, so there's a split here. I would call there it are, a games console. There are console. bad games for it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if we ignore the CDI, that was probably the most or is the most expensive mm. adjusted for inflation home console ever made. Um, let's just stick with the arcade for now. Um, <laughs> arcade games, I mean, it's, it's hard to say arcade games specific because the games were worked on both systems. Um, but what are some of your favourites that you can remember from the arcades? Um, Metal Slug, definitely. Um, things like Polestar. Uh, I, I like shoot 'em ups I like, I like uh, you know, the run and gun. Um, I wasn't so much like you. If I think about, um, you know, uh, beat em ups, I, I wouldn't go straight for one of these uh, in terms of the king of fighters and that. I, that wasn't my thing. Well, you say like me, I'm not a big fan of beat em ups. And that makes it difficult to explore the Neo Geo library because it's so heavily focused on the fighting games. If, if you exclude the beat-em-ups, which is a really stupid thing to do if you're talking about Neo Geo <laughs> because it is the home of the beat-em-up fans, um, it, there are uh, still games to be enjoyed, certainly a smaller selection. And in the arcades, the one I really remember playing loads were Neo Mr. Do, which was an updated version of um, Mr. Do, of course. <laughs> um, Neo Drift Out, which was um, a rally driving game. So around about the same time as Sega Rally, but absolutely not Sega Rally. This was a, um, a three quarters perspective or isometric rally game in 2D. And also Puzzle Bobble, huge fan of Puzzle Bobble. Um, so those, if we're excluding fighting games, that, those would probably be my, uh, my three picks that I used to play a lot in the arcades. Yeah. So those games like Puzzle Bobble in an arcade, I'd look at it and go, why would I want to shove money in to play really? that. <laughs> yeah, it just looked too simple. I'd always aim for, you know, whichever looked the glitziest. It's a bit like when I go watch a film. I don't want to watch a, uh, at the cinema some, you know, something that I can enjoy on TV. I want to watch something that's big and brash and, you know. I guess, but I was never a huge Tetris fan. It was Puzzle Bubble was the puzzler that really got me hooked, not Tetris. Mm. Um, so I really enjoyed it and I played every version. I've even got the Neo Geo pocket colour version here, which we'll, we'll come on to a little bit later. So I think it's fair to say the arcades would have been our first ever exposure to the Neo Geo. But while that was all going on and we were reading our Amiga magazines and thinking that we uh, had the best system out there, whether it was true or not, um, we were reading our magazines and quite often in the backs of my magazines, I would see adverts about importing systems. I would see uh, new sections about new systems that were coming out from far off lands. And there was this thing called the AES or the Advanced Entertainment System over here. And this is probably the first time I've met one face to face. I may have seen one in a retro shop in the past behind a glass cabinet. Mm. So if not, it's the first time I've got to hold one and, and, and play on one, uh, which we've been doing this morning. So originally this came out in 1990 and it was known as the Neo Geo Rental System. Is that mm -hmm. right? 
correct. Uh, because that's how it started life at the same time as the MVS. And then, you know, they could see it had a, you know, there was a call for to buy it for home use. So a few months later, it was produced as a, a standalone system that you could buy and take home. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the specifications of the system, they're identical. So you've got your 68,000, as was common in nearly everything. Right. It was running at 12 megahertz. That's pretty quick. 12 megahertz, yeah. 68,000 CPU, yeah. But of course, the 68,000 in this isn't really doing all the graphics or anything. It's That's the separate graphics hardware that's really the driver behind the Neo Geo. And then you've got the... Uh, and it's quite common for arcades in this time with the Mega Drive. You've got the Z80 acting as that second coprocessor relegated to doing all the, the sort of music uh, right. orchestration. <laughs> Main thing obviously on both systems is everything's in the cartridges and they go up to 330 megabits in the original cartridges. Tell and us what that is in megabytes. Then. Do the math. Uh, divided by eight, about 40, just over 40 megabytes. 40 meg. Typically, I think on this one, for example, we've got 118. Um, most of them were in that kind of, certainly the bigger games were in the 100 megabit range. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they came up with 100 mega shock. I giga think. shock? Or giga no, I think it's mega shock. Mega shock. Start. Giga power, was it? Uh, <laughs> there were all these kind of things that were added to the yeah. jingle screen to say our games are bigger and bigger and better. Yeah, I think the giga, the giga shock came in later when they figured out with some bank switching they could get it up to 700 odd right. megabit. But uh, most of it was sort of like, you know, 100 mega shock. Yeah. Yeah, so everything that the machine needs is obviously on the cartridge. And because of that, in terms of memory, you know, you've only got 64K for the main processor. You've got a couple of K for the Z80. So there's not an awful lot going on inside the machine because everything's in mm. here that it needs in terms of the graphics. Uh, in fact, there's two cards in there, two separate cards. And it wasn't just an arcade-like experience. If you were buying a Neo Geo AES, you were taking an arcade home. You know, um, in later years, what people used to like to do with the MVS board was buy the single slot board and make a consoleized mm. case for it and, and consoleize the arcade. Well, that's exactly what you were doing with this. You were taking home the arcade. You were getting the full arcade you experience. You had ultimate bragging rights for yeah. one of these. Um, and it's interesting though, you were talking about all the different games, etc. Funnily enough, my memory wasn't of the games. It was of the hardware specs. Right. Um, it was just the lists of, you know, all the different processors and the processor speed and the fact that, you know, the sizes of the cartridges. Everything was turned up to 11, wasn't it? Was. It? And it, yes. it was. It was a it was a 2D powerhouse. It had that 68,012 megahertz processor, but we didn't see it do any 3D games, Because it couldn't. Right, why because is that? Because the 68,000 doesn't have access to the video side. Right. So it's effectively orchestrating everything, but... If there was some kind of link between the two buses, maybe with some kind of dual ported RAM, they could have had the 68,000 create something to get copied back out. But everything that looks like it's 3D is pre-rendered graphics or right. using some kind of sprite scaling. It was just sprite, sprite, sprite. sprite. <laughs> That's it, all it was. It was a sprite powerhouse, <laughs> yes. But no compromise, you were taking the arcade home and you were getting the full arcade experience. And we've been playing some games this morning just to experience that, and my goodness, it is an arcade experience. Mm. You know, you turn it on and it feels just like you're in front of the arcade. Helped by the arcade sticks that came with it. Did these come as standard, these joysticks? Uh, these did, yes. Yeah. You got, I think you got one in the box and you could buy additional ones. And there's a slightly redesigned one, a bit more kidney shaped, yeah. uh, a later model. But these are the ones that go with the yeah. original. It just it felt like a pure arcade Neo Geo experience. And uh, it was done through this yellow beast. Tell us what this is. So this is one of these multi cartridges that came out a number of years back. It's 161 uh, in one. Um, obviously you've got multiple versions of things, of different games, and you're not guaranteed that everything on there is the proper cartridges. I think they got pre-release versions, etc. It's it's not, it's not legit? It's definitely not legit. <laughs> it was the sort of thing that a place would have bought to fit in their uh, uh, arcade machine to, yeah. Quite, I mean, that was quite cheap, but I, I can't plug that directly into there. Right, so yeah, although we're saying it's an arcade, you're taking an arcade home, this is an MVS cartridge, and yep. I can't just put that straight into the home no. console. No, because although it's the same, pretty much the same connector and the same layout, they've changed the pins around just so that the arcade operators couldn't buy the, the lower priced home games. Um, 
to fit in their systems. So how, how do you get around that then? Because you've got an adapter over here and, and I want you to plug it in just to show the ridiculousness <laughs> of, of it. So let's say we want to use this. So, so I, when I, I've, again, another purchase off an auction site. So I, I bought this uh, and it came with uh, one of these units, which purely changes it from uh, MVS one yep. pin layout to the other. Uh, also includes some stereo output because the only way of getting stereo output on here is through the headphone socket. Um, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> so the MVS cart goes into the adapter. Was the adapter expensive to get hold of? As I said, both of these came together and it was something like a hundred and fifty something. It is a lot of money. It is. But when you consider the alternative, a single game original cartridge, it can cost you well, I, I, three figures easily. For yeah, I think I paid about cartridge. Well certainly the, the cheaper ones, the more common ones, I paid about fifty, sixty pound for. Yeah. Uh, and if you want an SD card solution for one of these, you're talking about three hundred. Madness. So so what I wanted <laughs> was a cheaper way of of getting that fix of all the different ones mainly so i could play them and then see if there were any that i really wanted to get the original because as i said some of the games on here have some issues um they're not all perfect um, yeah there might be some bits missing or they might crash or something like that and i have to say we set this up earlier like this we put it in front of a 14 inch television and then realized we couldn't see the tv <laughs> <laughs> but um if you compare that to, I mean, these are chunky things in themselves. Um, so this is an AES specific cartridge. Um, yeah, they're slightly, slightly smaller. Shape. Oh, slightly smaller. Slightly yeah, smaller, yeah, 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 yeah. fractionally. <laughs> Only a little bit. But uh, I've you started measuring things. Um, you you yeah, feel like you're getting a lot of game for your money just by the size of it. Don't you? I feel like we should have a tape measure, Neil. I feel like we should be giving <laughs> some uh, inches measurements on this. Um, but. Yeah, if we take out this ridiculous setup, I take that off. Yeah, you? there we go, and pop in a proper cartridge. Right. Now that looks decent, doesn't it? It does. That looks mean. Uh, and one last thing, actually, on on the AES before we move on is uh, there are no region locks, are there? However, there are regions. Each cartridge has every version of the game in it. So this this has the AES and the MVS version of the game and the regions. So. There are some regions where you might buy this in Japan, use it in a US system. It won't be locked, you can play it, but for example, I think Samurai Showdown is a good example where the blood is changed, um, removed or changed to white. No, I think in Metal, Metal Slug, uh, the blood is white, so it's supposed to look more like sweat. Um, so they make these changes and it upset a lot of people when this happened because people wanted the full arcade experience. They wanted to feel like they were taking the arcade home and they were getting that exact premium experience that they would get if they're in the arcade. And if you go and do something like take the blood out, then you know, you're gonna feel pretty upset when you've spent 200 pounds on a cartridge. Target Renegade all over again on the CPC. <laughs> Blue blood. <laughs> yeah, <or> Carmageddon. <laughs> but these are home ports. You kind of, you think, okay, that's acceptable on a home port. If you mess around with that, you've got license to really. But you I, shouldn't have on the Neo Geo. I, I guess though, that in each country you've got your uh, you know, sort of like in this country, British Board of Put your censorship laws, censor haven't you? Yeah, yeah. and, and <sighs> yeah, <laughs> killjoys, <laughs> damn killjoys, taking all our Were fun there any away. way? Was there any sort of key presses or something to bring it back? What people tend to do these days is use something like this. So this is the Neo Geo Universe mm. BIOS, uh, which you can put into the AES or the MVS, and um, it lets you. It brings up a menu where you can choose. You can select what region you're in to unlock mm. those things. And you can apply cheats and you can do all sorts of other things with that BIOS. So it really is a must have um, for, uh, for a Neo Geo. Have so you put one in yours yet or not? Is, is there one in here? If it's not in there, then it's on the MVS board over here. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself one, yeah. Get yourself one. The next system we tried this morning is on loan from Pete at Retro Games HQ. Mm -hmm. Very kindly lent to us. Um, I say lent to us, he agreed to lend it to us and then he said, Oh, by the way, it might not be working entirely. Do you mind having a look at it? <laughs> okay, Pete, okay. So we had a look at it and it thankfully, all it was, the power kept going off. If you wiggled the power cable, it just need a bit of, needed a bit of reflowing, which um, Rob did for us on one of our cave open days. So reflowed it, it's working solidly now. So there you go, Pete, you owe me a beer. <laughs> um, so we sat down and we played on it this morning. Now, I've waited years to have a go on a Neo Geo CD. 
I know it's no different to the AES. I know it's no different to the MVS, apart from the way that it loads the games. It should be an identical experience. And to tell you the truth, it's the system that we started playing this morning. This was the first system we loaded up. And I was pretty happy with it. Mm -hmm. It's a single speed CD drive. Now, um, I should point out there were three types of Neo Geo CD that came out. The first one was in Japan only, I think, and it was a front loading CD, um, Neo Geo CD. This is the second one, which has the um, top loading CD. And um, both of those had single speed CD drives, so pretty slow. Mm. And then they brought out this one called the CDZ later, or CDZ, depending where you're from. Mm -hmm. And that had a double speed CD drive, still not massively quick, but at least a little bit quicker. And the thing that struck us both when we tried this was the loading speed. Mm -hmm. It was slow. Yeah, I mean, it's got it was about seven megabytes of RAM to which to load that data into, but boy, do you have to wait. Mm. Uh, I mean, even on, I think, obviously, we've had to burn some CDs to, to yeah, play there's, on. There's here. no copy protection on there. No, so uh, to get some games on it, we, we needed to burn some temporarily. Uh, and I think Puzzle Bobble was the smallest ISO at three megs, three megabytes, uh, yeah. and that took, what, 20, 30 seconds? To yeah, that, was, that uh, wasn't too painful. It loaded, and then the game played. And then once you're in the game, there were there, there were, were more loading. multi load. There yeah. was more loading to be done. You know, you chose a you chose a character. You had to wait it again. Yeah. So the loading was really painful. But I didn't really. I thought it was painful, but it didn't sink in how painful it was until we then plugged in the AES and we played the same games. And suddenly it was like we were right back in the arcade. We this felt like a home console. Mm -hmm. This felt like an arcade machine. Is that fair to say? I, I'd say. I mean, I I was obviously played this before. Yeah. So yeah. I. Yeah, I was already cringing. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are SD card solutions for this, which massively improve the load times. But they will make it a lot better, but you're still going to experience that sort of, oh, this is a home console feel because you've got the loading within the game. Um, if I had the choice, if I was going to pick one, I would, I would buy the AES. Um, I, would, I would stick with the cartridges, I'm afraid. That's not to say we had a bad time. When did this come out, the, the CD? The first one. 94? 94. So it was some years afterwards. Mm. And it would have been competing directly with the Sony PlayStation by then. So mm. we were coming into a new generation which was very much focused on 3D gaming. Mm -hmm. And the Sega Saturn and the 3DO would have been and gone. And the CDI, your favorite games console. <laughs> <laughs> it would have had a lot of competition. Um, it was a really good idea to switch to the CD because that brought the price of games down from mm. your 200 pounds to 50 to 80 pounds for a CD. Mm -hmm. So a lot more affordable. The only advantage this gives you is the CD quality soundtrack, but that in itself is a problem because of course it can't play that and load something. Mm -hmm. Whereas of course, you know, it's built in, it's got what, 14 channels of sound of various different combinations of uh, you know, FM synthesis, etc. So, um, I do have I do have reason to own one though. The reason to own one for me is because I love Puzzle Bubble, and it never came out on the AES. Uh, it came out on the MVS for the arcades, and it came out on CD for the Neo Geo CD. Now so, I wonder if you could load that onto an SD card solution there. Um, well, yeah, if the, you could take the MVS version, couldn't you? But mm. back in the day, you couldn't go out and buy a home no. cartridge to play on that. Yeah, there were ways around it. But, um, look, I'm, I'm trying to find a You're way to, to write... support the, the Neo Geo CD here. Pete's not <laughs> going to sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there were, um, there were some exclusive games to the CD, uh, which makes it a bit more home console-like because with this, you're taking home an arcade and you're going to get an arcade experience and it's going to be over pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. unless you're really good at the game. With this, uh, they did release um, a couple of ex exclusives, including one which was based on Samurai Showdown, but it was an RPG. So quite a more different Zelda game. Like. Yeah, quite a different game yeah. for, a, well, a bit more Final Fantasy-like. Okay. Um, so not really what you'd expect on a Neo Geo. And that game was also released on the PlayStation and the Saturn. So it, it went out to those markets too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, interesting. And I would have actually liked to have seen more games focused at the home user, perhaps on the Neo Geo CD, more games with mm. a bit more depth, RPGs, mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of thing, strategy games, to, to see what the power of this machine could have done with those other genres. That would have mm. been quite nice. 
But as it stands, um, I think the best thing it's got going for it is probably its looks. It's a damn good looking machine. Um, it's got hints of Sega Saturn to it, hints of a bit of 3DO, a bit of 3DO in there. Yeah, it's a good looking machine. Mm. Um, hints of the unreleased Sega Neptune. <laughs> and, the, and the controllers that came with it uh, have worked very well in your hand. And, and Yeah, yeah, actually that's a really good point because the first Neo Geo CD that came out had um, a joystick that was um, not as good looking as this one, I think. But this one, the second one, came with these joy pads. And um, there's something special about the, the D-pad itself, isn't there? Mm. It's clicky. It's clicky. It's full eight-way. It just feels good. If you haven't heard this, here we go. Where's my mic? It's a good noise. And better than the noise is how it feels. That is a, this is probably the best feeling joy pad mm. that I've ever used. It almost feels analog. Almost like a, like a modern, modern day, yeah. but with the click. The, and the throw is not so long that you feel like you've got to go make an effort to, to engage the micro switch. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Every joypad should be like that Neo Geo joypad. And of course you can use these on the AES if yeah. you want. So they're all pin compatible. You've lost the memory card slot on this one as well. So I, I don't think you could use that same bragging rights. Well, we've got, I say we've got well, one over here, mm. but it's got an Apple logo on it. Yeah, Why is that? It has. So, so this is an early battery backed SRAM uh, PCM CIA version one card uh, and the standard that the Neo Geo uses uh, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong I think it's Jedda or Jed something like that the, the um, Jedward Jedward yeah let's Jedward. call it Jedward uh, the <laughs> Japanese standard for memory cards uh, these are backwardly compatible with because they were the precursor to the PCM CIA standard right so uh, if you can't get hold of the proper uh, Neo Geo cards, you can get some of these early PCMCIA1 cards and they will work. They're the same 68 pin uh, and they pop in. Nice. Uh, they need to be the battery backed ones because the later ones that are flash memory, I don't believe worked, but this one works fine. So yeah, little Newton Good tip. card. Good tip. So we've talked about the MVS for the arcade gamers, the one I played on the most. Uh, we've talked about the AES over here for the premium home console gamer with uh, money to burn. Uh, the Neo Geo CD for the slightly more patient Neo Geo gamer. Um, we can't go without talking about one more system, which is related only in name, to be honest, and that's the Neo Geo Pocket. Now, the Neo Geo Pocket came out, um, well, this one, the Pocket Color actually came out in 99. Before that, you had the Straight Up Pocket, which was, um, I believe, released only in Europe and Japan. It never made it over to America, and that was monochrome. So um, it was competing, of course, with the Game Boy, the might of the Game Boy. Then came the Game Boy Color and the Neo Geo Pocket Color was competing with that. And um, it sold okay, but of course, on the horizon was the Game Boy Advance. So that's what everyone was looking ahead to. And also Pokemon was such a big deal. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to play Pokemon, you were going to buy your Nintendo handheld. However, there are some really nice examples of Neo Geo franchises making it into a, um, a handheld version. Of course, nowhere near as powerful as these systems, completely different games, but familiar games through those franchises. And we've got a couple here, um, some games you might not expect. So for example, we've got the um, expected SNK releases here, um, well, Taito published by SNK or licensed at least, Puzzle Bubble Mini. Samurai Showdown 2, um, we've got, and then we've got Pac-Man, okay, not too much of a surprise to have mm -hmm. a Pac-Man game on there, but also Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure, um, and Sega would have still been making hardware at this time. Mm. You know, I, I was quite surprised when I turned that one on that you've got in the cave, and up comes the old Sega logo and yeah, yeah. announcement. Um, yeah, it was unusual because, you know, it, it's so normal now to see Sonic in a mario olympics game on a on a nintendo platform mm. but it was pretty unusual back then to see that going on so um yeah a nice little um, side um step in neo geo history but in terms of hardware completely different system and i must say that this is the most popular handheld this and the atari Lynx are the two people make a beeline for when they come and visit the cave i've mm. seen people come here and play this for a solid hour wow <laughs> with all these systems here people are just fascinated by that so that's the neo geo pocket color let's get back onto the original hardware or what happened next for the original hardware because it feels like Neo Geo was around forever and that's largely because of the games that kept coming out for it but 
the hardware itself was discontinued in was it 97? 97 so it only got yeah. seven years of support um no it got it got more support seven years of production i should say and they wanted to replace it with um help me out here what so in was the it? arcade they went on to the hyper neo geo 64 hyper platform. neo geo 64 mm. yeah um, so that was really targeting the 3D games that were coming out. It was trying to keep up with those 3D games. Bit of a flop. I think there were seven games in total that came out for that um, arcade system. Worth having a look at because, again, familiar franchises. Samurai Showdown got a 3D makeover. There were some driving games um, that kind of looked like Sega Rally, but almost knockoff versions. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it didn't quite click. It didn't quite work. So um, that didn't work out. But we kept on getting games for the original Neo Geo. Um, how long did we get games for? I think the last official release was something like uh, 2004 with the uh, Samurai Showdown 5 special. And then moving forward again to the present day, there's um, a team called NG Dev Team, I think they're called. Have you heard of these guys? I haven't, no. They make modern, modern retro games. Uh, for modern systems, but they also do classic releases as well. And as early as, um, sorry, as late as 2019, they released a Neo Geo game. Um, so, and, and I think they've probably got plans to make more. So, and when I say they made it, it wasn't on the CD, it was a full on cartridge that you could buy and plug in. You're going to be looking for that later, and you're going to go and find yourself a copy. <laughs> so, certainly, I've looked around on the internet and, and uh, my programming skills are, are nowhere near good enough, but there's quite a few sites that are dedicated to how to program these okay. things. Okay. Yeah, there's probably a homebrew community out mm -hmm. there as well um, wanting to push this thing. So, it's quite astounding just how long games kept coming out for on this. Um, Good games, you know, it, it's a 2D powerhouse. It, it's turning out some of the greatest 2D games um, made. However, I should point out um, something I've noticed is uh, there is the Neo Geo slowdown on some of these games, isn't there? It's yes. quite noticeable on some of them. There, there was, when there's a lot of sprites on screen, uh, there was a bit of slowdown on the odd bit. Hmm. Yeah. Not on all games, but obviously a decision has been made in the creation process to go, well, that amount of slowdown is acceptable. I think it was more the shoot 'em ups where you've just got, not, yeah. not quite bullet hell, but something close to it. They just uh, haven't capped it. They've just said, yeah, keep it coming, keep yeah. it coming. It doesn't matter what happens mm. to the frame rate. Uh, and that's unusual for, um, for what should be a premium experience or an arcade experience. You would expect them to try and work around that to yeah. make sure that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah, see, I'm finding the negatives again. <sighs> On the whole, it's a positive system. And... I Geo. absolutely have to get <laughs> a, a, an AES uh, or a consolized MVS or an MVS that I can put in. Um, I've got a modern cabinet. Um, I could paint it red and put a Neo Geo uh, marquee at the top of the cabinet and, and people mm. could enjoy that, that authentic experience. But if you do want to enjoy Neo Geo, it's really easy, isn't it? There are so many options mm -hmm. out there. It's uh, emulation's very mature, isn't it? Yeah, you've got emu various emulators. It's built into MAME as well. Yeah, there's um, a good Mr. Core for people mm -hmm. that, that like to take that approach. Um, I was uh, emulating the Neo Geo back in the late 90s uh, because I had, um, had a PC with a video card that had an S video out um, uh -huh. socket. So I had the old family television that was redundant from downstairs, like a 21 inch CRT. Put that next to my PC wired that up and I downloaded because I owned all of the original cartridges I downloaded the entire library of MVS Neo Geo games on dial-up <laughs> I used Ooh. to use this program called get right which was a download manager so you could start the download you know in off-peak hours come back and download a bit more of the file the next day uh, and eventually I had the whole library and um, I spent a huge amount of time exploring Neo Geo which is why it's so special for me today to actually get to enjoy the real hardware. Wow, so yeah. as the rest of us were downloading ladies, you were downloading <laughs> Neo Geo cartridges. Something far sexier, <laughs> Neo Geo games. Just to close off the, uh, the episode today, the experience of buying this, has it been a positive one or has it been an anti-climax for you? Having parted with not insubstantial amount of money to own one, was it worth it for you? I think so. Uh, I can now say I own or have owned. You've got uh, the bragging the OG, rights. I've got the bragging rights, tick. Uh, it's enjoyable uh, exploring the software. Um, it's an instant hit. There's no waiting for, even on an emulator, you've got to wait for your PC to load up, etc. It just works. Uh, it's there. Um, I, I definitely am glad I went for this. I had seen this in Pete's store, uh, but I'd always thought, no, I need the 
yeah. I need the cartridge experience. And now I need one too, so uh, I'm going to be on the lookout for the AES. Let's go and play some more games because mm. we've got plenty to choose from in our custard cartridge here. <laughs> and uh, why don't you share your Neo Geo memories? When did you first experience the Neo Geo? Were you one of these ones with bragging rights at home that would have been lording it over all of us with your AES system back in the day? Let us know in the comments section. Check out Keith's channel and also look up Retro Games HQ. Thank you so much, Pete, for lending us the Neo Geo CD. And take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Let's game. Let's game. Yeah. <laughs>